Now, when you have completed um, one uh, assessment, it doesn't preclude you from doing any more. You're more than welcome to. So if you wanted to go back in here and uh, click into the tab you were in previously, you'll see it gives you an option to complete another self-assessment. So you can click on that. Um, you can share this, this tool, the web-based tool, through a lot of social media options and email options if you find it useful. It won't uh, email your personal details. It'll email a link to the URL to the website. We can click back into the self-assessment up here at the top to do another um, a little uh, schedule. So if you are working on a dwelling and maybe, I don't know, a care home, you could actually do a general self-assessment for each one and print them out and then have them in your file, have them alongside your CV and, and start to plan what you're looking for. And I, I've written in a couple of different places on the website, but we would like to encourage you to maybe repeat that sort of an exercise once a year and to use it to plan your ongoing um, educational, certified, experiential and continuing professional development requirements in the context of the Irish Building Regulations in particular. And that's the area that this has been designed for specifically. And again, once a year, you can pick your months in January start and do that once a year and see how you fare out. Um, I would be encouraging kind of our undergraduate and postgraduate students if they're working or studying in the area of the building regulations to also do the same and to see where they fare out uh, if this is an area that they're going to work in, either the building regulations from a building contracting point of view or from a design or consultation point of view, architecture or engineering, building surveying, architecture, technology uh, and go on out to uh, building control. I want to talk through the second more detailed option now and maybe just do a quick demonstration on that as well. If you wanted to look at a building specific self-assessment, the website has been designed to allow you to choose from one of nine different typologies um, and they are linked or mapped to the Irish building regulations that are relevant for those typologies. Now, the, the, I suppose the difficulty is we're at January 2022 when I'm making this recording and the website is live. The regulations are more than likely going to update and expand and uh, then the website will need to be updated accordingly. So if you find that something has not quite up to scratch, please do come back in the evaluation section at the end of this exercise and I'll be notified immediately then and uh, make plans to get the website updated. So for argument's sake, I'll just choose one building type and I'm going to look again at dwelling houses. Um, and you see some similarities in this web design tool in comparison to the, the simpler one, which was the broad brushstrokes approach. Again, we can't really be too vague about the building regulations. Um, they are onerous. They are there for the safety and welfare, health and well-being of individuals who are involved in the construction as professionals, but also for the general public. So in order to not gloss over any nuances, um, this is a more detailed mapping uh, tool that you can use on the website. So again, you can put your own name in your full name and your professional areas and you can put in other and type in whatever professional um, you know uh, job description you may have and then with using this sticky button at the base it should allow you to oh sorry my mistake it should allow you to continue on and you can see it actually works linearly systematically from technical guidance document a right through to technical guidance document M. Now they are current, as I say, for the Irish building regulations as of late December 2021, January 2022. And you'll notice as well that we have some of the same visual markers on this um, web page. Uh, so we're using stars and the stars are indicating little to none, some are sufficient training experience and professional development in that particular area of the building regulations. And the idea behind this exercise is to really make you think as a professional in practice, whether you have some good knowledge on that particular part of the regulation or not. Um, if you are an architect and you are not proficient in structures and you work with perhaps a structural engineer on your structural design work for a building control and regulation sign off, you can, of course, move through to the next section and ignore this section and it won't appear in your final PDF. 
Um, so we have a much larger document at the end of this exercise. And you can select continue to part B and then work your way through the parts of the regulations that you want to assess yourself on. You can use the sticky buttons as they appear as you scroll down um, the web page to revert back to any of the regulations as you see fit. It doesn't allow you to skip regulations because of the fact that it needs to be a very systematic tool and you know the functionality of that has been tested by instruction designers and graphic designers, people who are experts in this area in web design um, for that purpose. So for example, if A1 loading, if I felt again I had sufficient experience in my opinion uh, and I was competent, I felt it was competent as defined in the building regulations in Ireland, I could select that one. If I've made a mistake, I can click the reset button and start again and maybe maybe take note of how I feel that mapping is matched. So for example, if I have experiential or certified learning, I can type that down. So it worked on, you know, someone's house, say house design 2021, for example, and you could say undergrad qualification. You can take a note like that, or you can leave it blank. You don't have to fill out every section of this form. That's the nice thing about it. It should be fairly user friendly and you can work your way through each of the different subsections of technical guidance document A, as I say, as they currently stand, including all the subsections there. We've listed every single one of them and I'm just picking random things there to demonstrate for the sake of this exercise. Um, and then you can continue to the fire eggs for part B. Now these are written as, as, as volume two for dwelling houses um, published in 2017 and all of the subsections thereof. And I'm just going to skip that one. Part C, site preparation and resistance to moisture. Part D, material and the workmanship, a very important regulation that we have to be really mindful of and expressly state how it's done. And in this case, looking at your professional development, expressly reviewing how you're going to prove compliance with that particular part of the regulations. Uh, ventilation, another really significant one as we're learning um, so much through this pandemic. Hygiene standards, again, part G, part H. Uh, again, really technical, specific, quite engineering and orientated regs in some cases. Um, and the same for part J, heat producing appliances, part K relating specifically to dwelling houses, um, conservation of fuel and energy. Again, the part L relating to dwellings and dwelling houses. Um, and again, all the different clauses, including the European Union uh, Energy Performance of Buildings Regulations 2019, Regulation 7, 8 and 5, as stated in Part L, and Part M access and use again for dwelling houses. So I'm just skipping these. I'll just say sufficient on the last one for the sake of it. Um, and I'll just say postgrad just to type something in here and then click continue. At the very end of this template or tool, uh, if you like, tool um, or um, a, a way of measuring your competence and mapping it against the regulations. I have uh, just one ask that people fill out the self-assessment evaluation form of this functionality of the website. So again, whether you found that self-assessment form useful, somewhat useful, very useful. So again, there it's the positive psychology spin of the phraseology there. There's not bad or rubbish or it's all kind of constructive criticism. You know, and I would expect and hope that the feedback that we get uh, for this functionality, this this uh, professional development tool, will be, you know, comment would be positive as well, or constructive. You know, I'm more for learning and evolving, and I think that these things, it's, this is the first go at this, and I think it's going to be really useful for people. Um, so I just want to make sure that it works as well as possible. So again, you download a PDF, and just to give you. A, a quick glance to see what the PDF is going to look like. Again, it's a, something that's personalized. It has your name, the date you've completed, your own personal assessment. It has your discipline areas mentioned. It could be one or more. You could leave it blank or select other and leave that blank um, and uh, put your job description in there. And then it works systematically, as I say, linearly through all of the TGDs and associated regulations that are expressly stated in the TGDs and all the subsections therein um, that are included in the second schedule of the building regulations. 
And you can see the nice thing about this is that we have uh, the color coordination, you know, uh, which ties in with the website in terms of some sufficient or little or none experience. Um, and again, the definition of experience in terms of training experience and professional development and uh, longevity in a building typology. And it is very much specific to a building type. So this, in this case, was a dwelling house. And any text that I typed in appears as well in a lighter grey. So I have a little note taken of how I feel that mapping is done. I think this would be very useful for employers who are doing a review you know, of their staff competence and, you know, just really seeing how, how recent training has, has been done, if training is needed um, or if more training is needed or more um, onerous training is needed. Or if you've got somebody who's maybe not qualified as such in the built environment who is doing a lot of this work and maybe um, getting ancillary starts ready in the background, perhaps it might be a nice way to lead them into further training and development in areas that they're working on on their day-to-day -day work. Um, and it just spans over a number of PDF pages uh, and it gives you the opportunity then, as I say, to download it, print it, save it, keep it alongside your CV, use it for your professional development mapping and deciding really where you want to go in terms of your professional development for the year ahead.